One of my favorite things to do in Blender is recreating 2D art in 3D. Usually it's just a single 2D image, concept art or fully fleshed out piece that I then try to recreate staying as close to the original as possible. After doing it now for roughly two years, I have a pretty fleshed out workflow that works for practically every piece imaginable. So in this video, I will explain my workflow and thought process when creating one of these pieces and give you some tips and tricks to make the process simpler and more intuitive. And although you can do it using poly modeling as well, I will only cover the way I do it in scope mode. So to start, here's the scope that we'll look at today. And here's the original image. One thing you should clarify right at the start is whether you want to use symmetry or not. Symmetry can speed up your process a lot, but sometimes working without symmetry is more practical. For example, when the character has a very extreme pose. Most of the time I use symmetry, and once I'm happy with the scope, I then turn it off and add asymmetries like facial expressions. I start by identifying the different elements of the image. Afterwards, I try to simplify those elements as much as possible and start blocking them out in Blender. I start with the most basic shape and split it into smaller and smaller pieces until I'm happy with the result. So I start with the general head shape, then I add the eyes, nose and mouth and go from there. A quick tip for characters, only sculpting the head and not the neck can oftentimes make it look very odd and unnatural. So I like to always add the neck even though the original image might not have one. Because I use dynamic topology with constant resolution, the resolution I'm working with is very low. For the first stage, I'm using a resolution of 20. I try to push the low resolution scope as far as I can and try to capture the likeness as best as possible. In my experience, the closer you get to the original in the first stage of the sculpting process, the better it'll look in the end. You should make sure that you can at least roughly see the character in your scope before you increase the sculpting resolution and get to stage 2 of the process. Stage 2 focuses on refining the shapes that you've laid out before and generally smoothing out the rough edges of the current sculpt. I start by increasing my scope resolution to 50, splitting up the current shapes into even smaller ones and refining the edges and surfaces. Now it's time to add the smaller details, like individual teeth or eyelids, while still making sure not to get lost in details. One quick tip on that is to take a look at the scope from further away from time to time to not lose sight of the bigger picture, or a scoped. The second stage is great to add smaller displacements, for example in the face, caused by muscles, bones or fat pads, which can add a whole new level of realism or character to your sculpt. After I'm happy with the refined sculpt, it's time to enter stage 3. Stage 3 is all about detailing and adding depth to the sculpt. First of all, I increase the sculpting resolution once more to 100. Then I refine and add even more details to parts where I think it's needed. In this stage, I'm not changing the overall look of the character anymore, I'm just adding more definition so you can decide how much you want to add for your sculpt. Maybe in the original, there's an element that you think is still missing in your sculpt, or it's just supposed to be clearer. After you're happy with your sculpt, it's time to turn off symmetry, pose the character and add asymmetrical details. I close one of the eyes, move the lips, nose and add the tongue. If small adjustments like these aren't enough to pose the character, working without symmetry from the start might be a better option. After adding asymmetry and posing the character, I'm basically done. Now I repeat the process for the hair and that's it. Here's the final result with lighting and some colors. If you have more questions or requests, make sure to put them in the comments. I will also post the full process of this scope as a time lapse in the next few days, so if you're interested in that, make sure to check that out as well. Consider liking the video if you did, and if not, make sure to dislike it and tell me in the comments why. If you want to see more of my content, feel free to subscribe. You can also join my live streams over on my live channel. The link for that is in the top right corner of the video or in the description. And last but not least, if you want to hang out, a chat with me or other members of the community, maybe ask some questions or get personal feedback on your art, make sure to join my Discord. The link for that is also in the description. I hope you have a great day and maybe I'll see you next time. See ya!